While I do enjoy customers who have the budget to build out a very thorough HA recovery system with multiple servers and automatic failover and a wonderfully well-built SAN, that's not always the budget everybody has. So I want to talk about a reasonably priced, as in you just need two servers and nothing too special here, using XCPNG to have a fast disaster recovery plan uh, that doesn't break the bank and doesn't require a bunch of crazy software or anything like that. So what we're going to be using for this is XCPNG on two servers that happen to be identical. They don't have to be identical. One server can be faster than the other if you have an older server you want to use, but it should be able to run whatever VMs you want on this disaster recovery solution. Now, the way this is going to work is we're going to be replicating the data from the servers that are named Zenifer for one, Zenifer for two. Each of these servers just have local storage. That's what we're basing it on. My lab obviously has a lot more in it, but we're basing this on like a scenario where you want to put two servers in at a client, or at least maybe take their old server and use it as a backup so you can back up whatever their critical machines that are running on a schedule. The other tool we're using is Zen Orchestra. For the purposes of the demo, I'm using the free version, but yes, you can get a paid support version uh, that is beautiful in auto updates from the Zen Orchestra people. Uh, but like I said, for purposes of being open source, and uh, a lot of people are probably going to be testing out in their home lab, you can just go grab all this software and download it and compile it uh, and get it configured. Now, these servers happen to be in a pool, but that's not a requirement. You can send this to another server not in the same pool. I just don't feel like breaking my pool in my lab for this. But uh, pool is not a requirement. And what I mean by pool is these are in a common pool read up on it. I have videos about what uh, a pool is in the Zen server uh, nomenclature when you cluster things together, essentially. All right, so let's get started in Zen Orchestra. And I have a Debian machine running and show you actually how this works. Uh, but the basics are these two devices only have to be on the same shared network. That's the only requirement. And they both have to be running the same, well, I recommend uh, the same version of XCPNG. Uh, it would probably work with different versions, but it's free to update to the latest. So always make sure both machines are running the latest uh, just so you don't have any issues. So here is my Debian 9 replication demo. I just turned it on, booted up here. So it'll start up and we're going to replicate it live. Now I do have the Zen tools installed on this and this could have been a Windows machine or anything else. Uh, the nice thing is this is lighter weight because it's not a Windows machine. So the backup will go faster for purpose of the demo. But yes, I've tested this. Yes, this works. Uh, no problem with Windows or whatever VM you want running, uh, BSD, et cetera, et cetera. So we have backup NG. Now, the other requirement, of course, is that Zen Orchestra is able to talk to both servers, and that's really easy to do. I've done reviews on Zen Orchestra. Uh, great to set up, but it does have to be able to talk to both servers, but like I said, they don't have to be in the same pool. Because these are in the same pool, they don't, it automatically does that. And we're going to go to backup NG. We're going to go here to new. VM backup, and we're going to find our replication box. Now, currently, we'll jump back real quick here to see, you know, the replication demo happens to be running and has the hard drive on Zenifer local storage. So it's on server Zenifer. That's our main server. It's running on local storage. So back over to here, we're going to do the new backup. Replication. YouTube. Replication demo, if I can spell that. Continuous replication. And the destination is Center for Two's local storage. And what we're doing here is we're going to continuously on a basis of however you know you want to choose or however long you think you can uh, go without the server, have it backing up. What I mean by that is this is where the scheduling comes in. Um, keep two... Uh, every 30 minutes, two, two copies. Every 30 minutes is what we're going to do here. And this is the scheduling system. How many replication retention? We'll have two copies of this entire VM. You can go with one if you want. It really just comes down to how far back in case you want multiple snapshots of this. Uh, you can keep more, but obviously it comes down to how much storage is available. So keep two copies every 30 minutes. And we'll run this at like zero and 30. And you could run it more frequently. And what we're saying is how often do we want to do that snapshot? And you can probably say, well, what if I want to do it every minute? You'll run into an interesting problem. 
if you try to constantly replicate it every minute, one, you'll tax the machines quite a bit. Two, you'll run into what they call VDI chain protection. That's because you can only snapshot so fast and get data over there. How the distance between uh, the chains coalescing is going to be based on how fast these machines are. So it gets complicated. There's not like a simple calculation, but doing um, disaster recovery every minute is probably a little bit unreasonable. And obviously you're starting out with the fact that we don't have the budget for a giant HA system, which would be automated. So probably you don't have the fastest servers to be able to do this. So let's say every 30 minutes. And what this means is if the server dies within, you have only ever lost 30 minutes of that server by doing this. So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're going to head and hit create. All right, now we have the jobs created. And here's this one here. And it's been a while. I've actually done this demo before, obviously. There's some logs in here for this. But let's go ahead and we're going to replicate this. Now we're going from Xenifer to Xenifer 2, both using their local storage. And I'll fast forward because the very first time we do this, because we just created this job, the very first time you do this takes a little bit longer uh, because it's got to get all the data over there. Now with continuous replication, once the job has run and all the data gets over there, each subsequent change is going to go very, very quick. And that's what we're going to demonstrate here. Now you can go over to tasks and you can see it exporting and copying the data over right now. Uh, like I said, I'll fast forward through this so it's you know, painstakingly wait for this to happen. So the YouTube replication demo has completed. So we started with Debian 9 replication demo. We've copied it over here to the Xenifer 2 local. So it starts at Xenifer's local storage and moved to the local storage on Xenifer 2. Took four minutes, 11.19 uh, gigs, 52 meg a second here. Uh, like I said, pretty quick, done. And technically this was a full backup because this is the first one we did. Now, where does it live? How does this work? So let's talk about that. So it does not show up in the backup as like a restore process it is a actual machine with this date it'll update the date each time and this is the machine living on the other server now well not actually living setting in silence would be a better way to describe it if i were to start this up i'm going to get an error because it's flagged as a continuous replication it'll say hey don't start this unless you know you're ready to start this because the other one may be running so i'll get a warning so if i i won't hit it now uh, we'll walk through it after we do the disaster recovery demo. So here we are, we have it. It also creates a snapshot of this. Don't delete or mess with this map snapshot because this snapshot's part of how it knows how the replication worked. So you just basically let this machine live on and then we'll simulate where I didn't enable the schedule, but we'll simulate one by just running this again. It should be long enough for the VDI to coalesce so we can uh, run this again. If not, we'll get a chain error. But every, like I said, every 30 minutes should be fine. started. Got to figure out what the differences are. So we'll look at the tasks. Now we didn't even get to the task. Back to overview. Successful because there was all of four megs changed from the first time to the last time we did it. So it only does the differential. It's only creating a differential between here. So depending on how busy the server is will exactly depend on how long this takes to do. So let's do something to the server that's a little bit more substantial so we can uh, show the different data transfer. So four megs last time, 11 gigs is the full size of the server and only four megs because the change, let's make a bigger change to the server. Um, I think this will actually create a big file real quick. Uh, speed test. It's not a real speed test, it's a pseudo speed test, uh, but it creates a big file and deletes a big file. So that'll be enough change that something happened on the server. So we'll run the replication again after this and uh, you know, then we'll have some more data to transfer. And then we'll do the disaster test and how this happens. All right, that completed. And uh, all this does is create a big file and delete that big file real quick. It's not a true speed test, but it does create some a few gigs of data that it then deletes. So that would be sent as a change. Let's go ahead and run the backup again. Okay, job cancel to protect VDI chain. This is that demo. All we got to do is uh, wait briefly and uh, run this again. So I'll just pause for a second here. Okay, so I kicked off a new backup. I had to wait a few minutes because you can see skipped, skipped, skipped. Uh, I ran out of patience, but um, 
took three minutes and it still hadn't quite coalesced because of, the, like I said, the VDI chain. Uh, and now it started working here. So let's look at the transfers and it's done. And how fast was that transfer? So we, like I said, you've seen the speed demo, 1.9 gigs worth of data was created in that demo with that little basic script. So it needed 1.9 gigs. So he doesn't understand that I created data because I created it was essentially random noise for the data. So there's ends up with a 1.9 gig difference between the two virtual machines. Even though I created the data, erased the data, it still occurred. So it sees a difference in it. Therefore, there's 1.9 gigs of change. But either way, this took from, uh, let's see, we started at uh, 9.39 and finished at 9.40. So about a minute to do the entire backup. So when you're doing these Delta type backups on here, they go very fast. And like I said, if you're running it every 30 minutes, you shouldn't run into any of the VDI chain issues. Now, what makes this different from a backup and what makes it more of a disaster recovery is the restoration process. So now we can, we've got a couple copies. We can go here and look at our replication VMs. And we have two of them here and you can see they're marked. Now, if I create one more, it'll delete the oldest one. So I always have two to pull from. But like I said, this isn't really a backup. This is a DR plan. So if we, um, had to do a backup, we'd have to restore these. These are ready to run if this stops. So we're just going to go ahead and force shut down this. Let's just kill it and go, oh no, our server's offline. Now granted, you will have to monitor this because this is not an automated process. This is a manual process to start and stop these servers. But if you have a client with a server down, they generally let you know. And if you have any type of monitoring system, um, it will let you know as well. Go, hey, I don't see this server anymore. So now we're going to go back over and we can start our latest one. And when we fire this server up, you can force start, but it says start operation is blocked. No problem. We'll go ahead and force start this. And we are back up and running in, well, however it takes the server to boot, which is relatively quick. Now, everything is duplicated. So in a just a minute, this server will be back up and running. The customer's back to being happy. Your servers are, you know, ready to rock and roll. It's a simple DR plan. It does require some manual intervention, but I don't think that's too big of a deal because the manual intervention uh, is not that difficult and that quick. You're able to replicate this from the last backup. And if you're running it every 30 minutes, you've only lost 30 minutes worth of data. Your server is saved, backed up and running. Now you can work on the other server and figure out why it's not running at all. And then you start the process over. You actually, you do have to, I do recommend, I mean, there's ways around it, but, um, because this job, I would actually recommend deleting this job and starting over so you don't try to synchronize these things or have a problem trying to restore the backup. So you just go here. You can either just edit the job. And because this is all done by uh, IDs, you choose the one server here and we'll go uh, choose this one here and we set up a new replication. It's going to set new snapshots up, et cetera, et cetera. So you're back up and running. It's a really simple process. It's one of the ways that we keep our servers just kind of at the ready. We do backups of them, and that way you can take the entire VM and back it up off-site. Uh, but a backup takes time to restore, and this takes no time. This is just a matter of, oh, main server failed. Go ahead and turn it on there. I think there's some ways I've seen people talk about ways to automate this uh, and turn it into, well, it's all scriptable. So technically you could set it. So if you don't find the other server, you could write a script to say, hey, the server's down to do that. Uh, but you have to be careful as well if you shut down the server for maintenance and it tries to fire up your old server and you create new problems. Uh, but this is a pretty simple way to do it with two servers. And I just want to point out when people ask about disaster recovery planning, it does not have to be super complex. This kind of fits a lot of people's budgets. We have a few clients that have this set up. You know, we took their old server. We have it. We know it's not going to run fast, but they have a couple core things they want backed up. You can set it up. That way we have all the other backups set up, but this is another way of another layer um, on site that you can have that you can go, all right, if I need to, I can instantly have this person back up and running based on a 30 minute or one hour schedule, depending on how taxing the machines are. And like I said, it's only doing a Delta backup of the changes. So the replication happens in really very fast. Even a two gigs here of change uh, took all of one minute. So even a reasonably busy server you can uh, have it up and running uh, pretty quick and you can just put this on a schedule and have it like i said run every half hour all right thanks thanks for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and maybe youtube will send you a notice when we post 
If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.